Today I'm gonna be reviewing a CV from Eleonora who is uh, trying to apply for a researcher job. I don't have a degree in HR, I am not a recruiter. I just had a couple of classes about how to write a good CV, how to present yourself in the right way. Plus I have been having talks with the recruiters on stream that taught us how to write a good CV. So these are some tips that I've learned and that I am just sharing with others. And most of the other tips are coming from uh, the chat itself. If you're looking for another specific CV or resume for a specific job, Look at this playlist right here. I usually try to review every single CV that I receive So I have multiple categories that you can look for. Anyway, this is the CV. First thing, two columns. You know that. You know that already. What I was looking at before is like these two columns is decently made. You see how like even if I go down, it's taking everything like this. Like it's going by order. What did you use to make this? Overleaf latex. You see like in this case, since you use the overleaf latex, it's still working. But as long as you're not using Canva, two columns could be okay. But in any case we don't know how stupid the ATS will be I would just play it safe and just put everything in one column but if you want to risk it and keep it like that you do you all right but my suggestion is always to go for one column only here I really love the fact that there is one line and then one line for all the information here in general I love the layout it's very clean it makes me want to read it because it's clean and it looks like very like experience education expertise certificates volunteering like I feel like everything is clean you use the, the right way of like using two columns so I feel like uh, from a human eye perspective, it's also pretty cool. We just have to, again, there is the thing about the ATS. So we have to figure it out if it could be like good for a machine eyes. So since you're applying for a research, usually what you want to have, the most recent thing as the first thing. In this case, this one is the most recent one, this education, especially like since you're applying for a researcher job, maybe the education should be the first chunk, right? So this one should be first before experience unless the position the researcher this one it's very similar to the one that you want to apply for if it's very similar to the one that you want to apply for i would put experience first and this one as the first one and this one as the second imagine i thought the cvs were still read by people and not scanned by systems no unfortunately not but it depends if you're applying for a small company of course they are gonna go they don't have the money for an ats but if you're applying for a bigger one they're gonna definitely have a, a software if you're applying for a university as a researcher usually they go manually usually that's what finite singularity said in the last video if you're also trying to apply for a, an academic role you can search for this video right here and it's been reviewed with the PhD graduate and professor PhD professor do everyone do one page CV it depends where you're applying and what you're applying for when it's an academic CV it's okay to have more than one page CV because uh, you have all of your publications if you do have publications make another page a separate one with all your publications and that's at the second page. Another situation where you can have more than one page CV is when you're applying for a senior position. So you have multiple years of experience or if you're applying in the UK and in Colombia, if I'm not wrong. Having a PhD helps or hurts your job prospects. Why? Specifically, that's the benefits of having higher level opportunities outright having a much smaller, more competitive pool of jobs to apply to. I mean, the more knowledge you have, the better should be your prospects on having a funny a job, right? Like you should have more opportunities. I think so. But at the same time, you could get into the position where they say like, uh, oh, you are over overqualified. They could tell you like, oh, you're overqualified for this job position. But then it's, I think it's up to you to just say like, oh, I, I would accept less of a payment. If I was a company and I had to choose between two people, first of all, I would not look too much at, about the degree that they have. My personal thing, I would rather first look at how many projects they work on because if they just study their whole life, they don't know how to work in a team. If it's not a researcher job, if it's a researcher job, then I want them to be able to study and research and do all those kind of things. Anyway, let's let's finish this one or otherwise the editor is gonna kill me. Let's say that we are gonna put the education first. Uh, here you have the bachelor, then you have the master, then you have the postgraduate, but the postgraduate finished before the master. This is confusing. How did that happen? It was in between, you did a postgraduate before. In any case, I would put the one that you finished, last one for first. So this one becomes the first, this one is the second one, and this one is the third. Always remember, anti-chronological order. Here you have relevant courses. Instead of relevant courses, I would rather put like uh, projects that you work on or uh, researches that you worked on. On. They want to know what you studied, but isn't it like medical biotechnology and nanobiotechnology? Like I, I expect you to be studying genetics, but I would rather like have them like in a simple line, one line. Oh my God. Spend my two years of lessons at home with my dad. Oh, that.
That I thought you were saying like with your dad, not didattica distanza. Cioè in Italian, studying from home, we call it dad. So you're studying with dad. And I actually thought you were saying like, oh, I stay at home with my dad. I was like, all right, that's a cool information. <laughs> But here I see a problem. So it's I learned and then gained, like not caps lock G, and then using and then there are RNAs. So what we want to do usually here, it's we want to have the first words here, always with an action word and always the same. Here should be learned and then gained, all with caps lock the first letter, and then used and then uh, I don't know here what it's something because what we want to know here is like we want to know what you did. So learned how to process biological samples using clinical management system. What are these management systems? Write them, write the name of them. So when they're looking for like they're gonna be like, oh, we're using Asdrubale Paolo management system. They're gonna go look at it like, oh, they really know how to use Asdrubale Paolo management system. That is so cool. We don't have to teach them. Nice. We don't have to waste like two months explaining how that works. Write it there. Then gain experience with blood count, the detection of tumor markers, you know, blah, 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 blah. Say how many were you able to analyze it per day. By I increase my own, uh, I don't know, my way of detection from this to this one. Use data because we said it's gonna be used. Using data coming from the human protein atlas database. And this one should be together. We found a pool of genes uh, involved in pancreatic cancer. For this one, you didn't write any paper about this? There should be a paper about this, right? Put that thing, put the CDMS uh, thing here. Then expertise, I think it could be like the last thing since it's just like a list of things. Then we have certificates, Cambric English assessment. Not that important, I would say. Like it, it is cool to have, but you can also have this one at the very end. The postgraduate research and teaching. This one is most probably more useful to have because like in between these two, the most important is postgraduate research and teaching. And this is definitely more important. Then you have volunteering, WWF. Again, here, this one first and this one second. I feel like this one is interesting. If you're applying for like a marine biology, then maybe, but otherwise it's not that relevant. But apart from that, it's a really, really cool CV. And, and I love the idea that it's all like connected together. Also the WWF, it's fine because it's biology. It's right there, still in, in the same kind kind of uh, field, so it's nice. Try to find researchers that maybe you helped or like do it in your uni, I don't know, something, put it in there. This is all for the researcher CV, on to the next one.